Now we're moving on to adjusted basis. And if you're saying to me, hey, Nick, didn't we just go through basis and why are we adjusting it now? Well, sorry to break it to you. We have a few more components that are going to go into our original basis. We did determine our original tax basis, our depreciable base, but now we're moving into our adjusted basis because guess what? Nothing stays the same. Now, adjusted basis, we're going to see here, this is an essential concept in tax accounting as it is going to help us to determine the taxable gain or loss. And that is kind of the same sentence we've been seeing for tax basis. So you're like, what the heck's going on here? Well, yeah, because your tax basis doesn't stay the same. You have depreciation, you've got additions to that initial basis. So that's a couple of things we will see here. The adjusted basis is going to represent the original cost of the asset, adjusted for any improvements, additions, or deductions like depreciation over time. Now it's going to be important for tax purposes because it's going to help us to calculate the accurate amount of capital gains or losses. It's all the same stuff, all the same stuff we've been dealing with. So all we need to know here is that the adjusted basis accounts for your original tax basis plus any improvements and additions. So let's say we calculate our original basis in uh, year one and we have some extra costs we add there. Then in year two, we make some of those improvements that improve the useful life, improve the production value of this asset. That is going to increase its adjusted basis in year two. And then we've got depreciation, which we're going to take depreciation expense every year. Also, if there's any write downs, impairments, other costs, other expenses that reduce the value of our asset. That's our adjusted basis. Now, this concept very similar to what you'd see in financial accounting as well. That's why we definitely recommend you don't take financial and regulation back to back. But enough said about that. Let's keep diving in more and seeing more examples. Here's an example. We've got adjusted basis here. Suppose that you purchased a rental property for $200,000. That was its original cost. But over the years, you made improvements worth $50,000 and you've claimed total depreciation of $30,000 for tax purposes. Now, we don't know the time frame here, but we're also not worried about it. It's not saying in year two or year three or anything like that. We're not worried about it. Just what's the adjusted basis based on what we know? Well, that's going to be the original cost. And you could even say that's the original adjusted basis, the original tax basis. Maybe that includes uh, fees, it includes shipping costs, whatever that is. Not that you're shipping a rental property, but you know anything we talked about earlier, maybe you make improvements, you add an extra room to the property, whatever it is, and then you depreciate it 30,000. So our total adjusted basis now, at whatever point in time it is, again, we're not worried about that because the question or prompt doesn't say anything about that, is $220,000. Now in this example, the adjusted basis is 220. This figure is going to help us because when we sell or dispose of the property, that is going to be critical. And you might be like sick of this phrase at this point, <laughs> us bringing up the point that it's important for when you sell or dispose of the property, but you'd be surprised how much this happens throughout the rest of the exam when it comes to the tax sections, the tax lessons, that's going to happen quite a bit. So super important. That's where we've beaten it to death, making sure that you're quite the expert here. Now, for instance, if you sell the property for $300,000 while the adjusted basis is $220,000, Again, just it could continue to go down. It could go up if you make it additional additions to it. But from this point, if we sell it for 300, the adjusted basis at this point is 220. Then our total taxable capital gain will be $80,000. Now, in this case, you'd be liable for taxes on this $80,000 capital gain. The adjusted basis ensures that you are taxed only on the actual gain from the asset, taking into account any improvements made and the depreciation claim. Generally speaking, you want a higher basis because look at that. If you had a higher basis, you pay less taxes. You'd have less of a taxable gain. And for financial purposes, you want more of a gain, makes you look good on your financial statements, but you want a higher basis. That's a critically important, especially as we get into S Corps, partnerships, a lot of other lessons later down the line. You want a higher basis. And we see it right here. The higher the basis you have, the less taxes you will pay. Hey there. Are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material? We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing, because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. 
Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.